Hi everyone, um, this is another video for Math 3273 and this one is about um, taking the singular values and getting the singular value decomposition of a matrix. Okay, so let's remember we have the singular values of A are going to be sigma 1 up to sigma R, um, non-increasing, and then sigma R plus 1 up to sigma Q are going to be 0. Okay, and Q is the minimum, so A is an m by n. Q is the smaller of the two of m and n. And um, and and this sigma, the sigmas are the non the like uh, sigma one squared onto sigma r squared. The non-zero eigenvalues of a, A star A, let's say. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So you have the following theorem, which is a factorization of A in terms of the singular values and um, two unitary matrices, matrices V and W. Okay, so the theorem says that um, I guess I didn't write the hypotheses, that's not good. So let me just make a little box here. The hypotheses of the theorem is that A is an M by N matrix with complex entries. Okay. Then there exists um, unitary matrices W and V um, and and V is M by M y, W sorry I almost said U W is N by N such that A is V times Sigma times W star where Sigma is a block matrix Sigma is an um, M by N matrix in block form. It's R, the top R by R part is this coming from the singular values and the rest of it is zero. Okay. So Sigma is almost like a diagonal matrix has Sigma one down to Sigma R in the top R by R part uh, of it, of its, of its block matrix and then zeros everywhere else. Okay, so sigma has m rows, so and then sigma has n columns. So v is n by n. Sigma is n. Oh, sorry, v should be m by m. Sorry, sigma is m by n, and w star is n by n. So the result will be an m by n matrix, just like a. Okay, so the proof is a little bit involved, but it doesn't involve any um, anything we don't know, so let's do it. Okay, first of all, we can assume that uh, M is is bigger than N, so it has like A has more col more more rows and columns. If A has more columns than rows, we'll just prove the theorem for A star. Like we'll just prove like a star, then a star will have more rows and columns. We'll prove the theorem, and then we'll then we'll um, note that a, if if I, if I prove the theorem for a star, then I take stars, and I've proved the theorem for a as well. Okay, so without a loss of generality, we can assume m is greater than or equal to n. Okay, and we'll look at a star a, which is an n by n matrix. Okay, and we'll write it as so, so we know that um, A star A is a positive semi-definite matrix. We can write it as W, D, W star, and we'll write D to the one half. So this is D is N by N, and we'll write D to the one half as the, um, the top left-hand corner. So this is a N by N matrix. The R by R part in the top left will be um, sigma r, the singular values, and the rest of d to the one half will be zero. 
Okay, so notice d to the one half squared is just um, the singular value squared. Okay. Okay. Now, now we define e. We'll take the same block decomposition as d to the one half. But we'll put an identity matrix. This would be an n minus r identity matrix in the lower right. Okay. And uh, notice that if I multiply d to the one half times e inverse, um, I'll get sigma r inverse times sigma r here. I'll get the identity, and I'll get zero times the identity here. I'll get zero. Okay, so d to the one half e inverse is like a block matrix that looks like the r by r identity and then zeros everywhere else. Okay. And then we, um, we take b to be a times w times e inverse. Okay. Um, Okay, I don't really know a good reason to do this except for that it works, so, um, okay, I mean, that's fine. I'd be happier if I get, I guess if I knew why, but oh well. But anyways, we do, um, we compute B star B. So B is just A, W, E inverse. We take its conjugate transpose. Um, the first term will be inverse star, but E inverse is a, what, where is E? Here. It is a symmetric matrix, and it has real entries, so E inverse star is just E inverse. So first we have E inverse, but it's really E inverse star. Okay, E inverse. Then we, next we have W star. Then we, next we have A star. Then we have A, W, E inverse. And here's where our choice of B uh, kind of pays off. Well, because A star A is just W, D, W star. So if I put in a W, D, W star here, in terms of, it, instead of A star A, we get W star W, that's the identity. Then we get D, and we get W star W, that's the identity. And then on both sides, we have E inverse. So we get E inverse D, E inverse, in other words, we get E inverse d to the one half d to the one half e inverse, and e inverse d to the one half is this um, block matrix uh, r by r identity in the top left and zero zero. So is d to the one half times e inverse. So we just get this matrix. Okay. Well, we get this matrix squared, and this matrix squared is just equal to itself. Okay. So that's b star b. Okay, so B star B has a particularly simple form. So uh, from, from now what we can do is we can write out um, B star as uh, in blocks, or sorry, B in blocks. So we'll split it up into um, two parts. We'll call the first R columns of B, and we'll call that VR, V sub R. Okay, we'll call the next, um, so, We'll call the next n columns b prime. Wait, do I have that right? So how big is b? Um, this is an m by n. So b should be an m by n matrix. So yeah, it should have n columns. Okay, and now, so let's write out b. Is it like a one by two block matrix? So we, if we compute b star b, what happens? Well, we just do uh, VR star B prime star times VR B, B prime. And so in the top left, we get VR star VR. In the um, bottom left, we get B prime star VR here. Then we get VR star B prime here. And then we get B prime star B prime here. Okay, but this is this is B star B, which we've already seen is this matrix. So VR star VR is the R by R identity. VR star B prime is zero. B prime star VR is zero. And most importantly, B prime star B prime is zero. The only way that can happen is that if B prime is a zero matrix. Okay, so B prime is a zero matrix. 
VR star VR is the identity matrix in particular that tells us that the columns of VR are orthogonal or I, I guess I should say orthonormal okay in particular um, we can find a like um, we can find a matrix V prime so that V is um, so the columns of VR are orthogonal so we can find V prime so that V which is the first R columns are from VR and then just extended by V prime is a unitary matrix which is M by M this you can do this whenever you have uh, orthonormal columns you can extend them until you get an or a uh, unitary matrix I should say okay so that is good because at the very beginning pro of the problem we had a, a unitary matrix W but now we're getting an n by n unitary W now we're getting a unitary m by m matrix V and according to the theorem this V and W should like um, give us our singular value decomposition okay. so let's just check that if you do a times w and v times sigma that you get the same thing well the construction of del of sorry of b says that a w is b e why because b is just a w e inverse so b e is a w okay and b is just the first r columns of v which is vr with zero and then E is this block diagonal matrix sigma R, the singular values, and then zeros in the identity. Now if I do block multiplication, I get VR times sigma plus zero, and then I get, um, and then the rest of the entry, and then this part is, um, let's see, zero times VR plus zero times I. Okay, so zero. Okay, so that's AW, is the R columns of my matrix V times the R non-zero singular values. Okay, what about V times sigma? Well, matrix sigma is like a block diagonal matrix with the singular values in the top left and then zeros everywhere else, and I multiply by um, VR with V prime. If I do that, I get um, VR sigma R and zeros everywhere else. I get the same thing. Okay, so therefore AW equals V sigma, and multiply both sides with W star, you get A equals V sigma W star QED. Okay, um, uh, after this, so thanks for watching. Um, after this, I'll just have one short video, um, maybe talking about the different equivalent forms of the singular value decomposition. Okay, thank you. Bye.